So just to recap the whole unit, since we're finishing it today, the first day we did areas, it's either upper minus lower or right minus left. There's not really a good way to tell if it's dx or dy than looking at it and seeing if you have one graph above the other or if they're next to each other. A big clue, though, that it's going to be sideways is if you have an x equals equation, um, you have to make a full commitment to it being backwards. Second day, we did those cross sections. So you figure out what your shape is. Not figure it out. They tell you what your shape is. And then the area goes inside of your integral. Last time we did disks. That means every single slice is what shape? And that fell on pi day, which was so perfect. Okay. So this is going to be like the disk method, but it is called the washer method. I kind of wish they would just call it the donut method. That's what everyone calls it. But do you know what a washer is? Like if you go to Home Depot and you get like in the hardware section, it's a disk, but with what? With a hole in the middle. This is not any different than what we did last time, except you're subtracting out that hole in the middle. So look, this is what it's going to look like. You have the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. And they use a capital R for the bigger one and the small r for the little one. Are we all good? Not any different than last time. I don't have anything else to add to that. You just got to subtract out what's in the middle. Before we do this one, I'm going to share my screen, though, just because you have to have a bit of an imagination. But I'm going to show you this video real quick to, like, help you out with that. Can you just take a look at this real quick? So this is, I don't mean to move this out of the way. So see how you have another line in there? So this is going to be your shape. And remember how I tell you to erase all your tails from around it? See, they got rid of those. And what's going to happen is when you revolve that around, see how you get a three-dimensional thing, but there's a hole in the middle? Does that help with, like, your imagining a little bit? We'll try to envision them. Um, but anyway, that's, that's like, what they're going to look like. So you have, to, you have to have an imagination. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. We've got y equals x squared. I'm not going to ask you to shout out points for that. It's y equals x squared is a regular old parabola. Can you please just go ahead and graph that? Like you guys need to be able to do that. You know, the, the graph is only just to give you a visual and mainly to get your boundaries so you can look at it and get your boundaries. And I didn't check, but I would be willing to bet when you go to do your delta math, remember if they don't intersect at a nice whole number, you have to put them into y equals and calculate the intersection. Do you remember that? Because I'm willing to bet they're going to do that. Uh, but that's basically all the graph is really for is to give you a visual and help you get your boundaries. All right, now let's do this one together. Um, I would make a table. Let's make a table for this. So if you plug in zero for Y, what do you get for X? Yeah, zero. So we're still going to start at zero, zero. This one's going to be a sideways parabola, just as a heads up. All right. And then I would not plug in one for Y, probably, or two or three, I would maybe go to four. And it's not going to matter if you do plus or minus four, because why? Because it's squared. So what is four or negative four squared going to give you? So 16, so divide by eight would give you two. And then that's honestly probably good enough. If you keep going, the next one is going to take you like way off of the grid. So you're going to get two, four, and two, negative four. So it's going to look like this. It's a sideways parabola. Do you see it? It's kind of the point of the picture is to like help you be able to see it. So the part that you get to shade in is this like little flower petal looking thing. And then I would erase everything else outside of that. Like I would get rid of all of that. If you're writing with pen, maybe wait until we, you know, finish it and then just draw that one little piece. Because that's really all you want to focus on. So what are we revolving around? Uh, read the rest of the problem. The, okay, so it's going to be a DX problem. Everything is right side up. That's good. Okay. I would draw a ghost shape down here below the X axis. This is your ghost shape. 
And then I'm going to try and draw in the circles. I did it with the discs too. If you remember, I drew in like what I was trying to get you to see a disc. Didn't really matter though, because there wasn't a hole in it. But this is how it's going to look for this one. Your outside circle goes all the way to the very far edges of it. Do you see that? Like it's touching all the way to the edges. And then the inside one kind of just goes there. Do you see it sort of? I'm trying to make it three dimensional, but I'm not a great artist. Maybe if I turn it this way, can you envision what that would look like three dimensionally? It would be like what I would consider like a candy dish. Have you ever seen like a fancy glass candy dish where like the inside is a little bit weird? Like the inside would be like this. Right. And that it's round. Yeah. Okay. But you could actually put stuff in it. Do you remember last time I said it was like a cereal bowl? You can't put any cereal in because it's solid the whole way through. Like this one, you could actually put stuff inside of it. Okay. Now I am a big proponent of doing the setup so that your framework of the problem is good. It's still pi r squared. You just have two squares instead. So it's going to be pi r squared minus r squared dx. That's your setup. Do that so you don't forget a squared and you don't forget what you're doing. Like that's your framework. What are our boundaries? Zero to two. Perfect. They are x boundaries. And again, on the AP exam, typically the pi and the integral zero to two is worth a point all by itself. They'll say set up, but do not evaluate. We're, now we're going to evaluate it if it seems reasonable. All right, now I will try to color code this. Uh, the colors don't show up great on here, but I'm going to make an attempt. It's still upper graph minus lower graph. Your outside radius goes all the way to the edge. So which graph is that that's all the way up here? Like, which one is that? Yeah, that's this one. Now you have to get y by itself. So it'd be square root of 8x that goes in there. Now I said it was upper minus lower, but what's the lower graph? The x axis, which is zero. So you could put square root, bless you, square root of 8x minus zero if you want. But if it's the axis, I usually don't put it. All right, and then the inside one is just this distance. Bless you. Are you okay back there? All right, so which graph is that? Yeah, that's the x squared one. And again, if, if you're thinking upper minus lower, it'd be x squared minus the axis, which you could put minus zero in there if you want, but I, I probably wouldn't. If it's zero, I just usually don't. All right, that's it. That's the setup. That's the lesson. All right, you could either slam that in the calculator or do it by hand. I think this one looks reasonable to do by hand, and I don't want you to lose your skills. So we're going to actually work this one out. What's going to happen with that first part? Yeah, it'll just be 8x, good, minus, perfect, antiderivative, and pi is going to just kind of sit out front here, antiderivative for 8x, good, 4x squared minus 1 fifth x to the fifth, such that 0 to 2, and basically you just need to plug in 2 because 0 is just going to give you 0, so 2 squared is 4 times 4, 16, minus 2 to the 5th, 32, so that'll be 32 fifths, you know, whatever that is, but we made it through. A lot of these you're going to end up just putting in the calculator, though, because these do get rather complicated because of the subtracting out the middle part. Let's try another one. Find the volume generated by revolving. Oh, they tell you it's going to be a semicircle. So we know we're going to get a half circle bounded by this. Oh, big red flag here. What do you notice? X equals. So, hmm, it's probably going to be a dy problem, but let's wait and see. Not always, but usually. All right, let's go ahead and make a table for that. I'm going to plug in for y and get x. Um, let's start with zero. If you plug in zero for y, two. Perfect. Um, I would probably not do one because then you're going to get square root of three. I don't feel like dealing with that. Let's do plus or minus two. And the reason it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus is because you're going to square it, so it doesn't make a difference. So if you plug in two or negative two, what do you get? Zero. All right, so let's go ahead and plot those. Two, zero, zero, two, zero, negative two. And lo and behold, it is a semicircle. It was kind of nice that they told you what shape it was going to be. 
it's always nice when they give you more information. You know. All right, and it says, and the y-axis. So that's this right here. And so this is our shape. We didn't have to erase anything that time. That's cool. Now, what line are we revolving around? So x equals negative 1 is this right here. I would dot that in. Now, watch me point to this. Do you see how it's like you just took the y-axis and scooched it over a little? So it is going to be a dy problem. And you're going to do a mirror image of that over here. Sorry, I went into my table. But this is your ghost shape over here. Just like a little sketch of that. And so you're, you have to envision this being three-dimensional. The outside radius goes all the way to the edges. You see that? Like, I'm trying to make it look three-dimensional for you. And then the inside one is just that part. So what would this look like three-dimensionally? If you take that and it goes the whole way around, then there's like a hole punch through it. Yeah, or like a cord apple. That's a good one. Or yeah, like a very, very thick bagel. Yeah, like a really, really thick donut. Or like a basketball that you somehow punched a hole through. Are you envisioning it? You see what I'm saying? Or if it was very, very small, like a bead that could go on a necklace. Are you, see, are you seeing it? I'm trying to make you see it, but okay. Okay, so anyway, it's going to be pi r squared minus r squared dy. So our boundaries need to be y values. So that would be from where to where. Yep, negative 2 to 2. And then again, I'll try and color code this. We're going to do right graph minus left graph. Watch me point to it. This is a lot of like being able to visualize here. Your outside radius, this is the right graph. And then it goes all the way there to the center. That's the left graph. All right, so which one is the right graph? That's yeah, like that thing, right? And then which one is the axis we're revolving around? Okay, so when we do right graph minus left graph, it's going to be this thing minus negative one. I realize that will be plus one, but please write minus negative one because I want you to understand it's subtraction. It's right minus left. Right minus left. All right, and then I'll try and do the inside one blue. Again, I know the colors don't show up real well on here, but it's right graph minus left graph. So it's just this distance here. What's your right graph? Since it's the axis, that's zero minus negative one. Now, what I do get, some people will go, Miss Cole, can I just look at this and go, oh, that's one unit? Yes, that's perfectly fine. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Do you see how from there to there is one? Plus. So the axis is the right graph, that's zero. Minus the left graph is the axis you're rotating around, that's the negative one. But that would just end up being zero plus one, which is one. So the other thing you could do is just look at it and go, oh, that's just one, okay? We will just be putting that in the calculator, but that's an important skill too, because if you hit one button wrong, it's gonna be wrong. Um, so let's all just take a minute and plug that in. I'm listening to you back there if you were talking to me. If not, then just carry on. Oh, and I know it says Y, but you're still gonna type X just because you have an X button that's a lot easier. Um, oh, I didn't put my R and my L in there. Is that what's bothering you guys? Like this is R and then this is L. Right, left. I take it you got that? You look happy, so I was like, okay, cool. Okay, go ahead and flip over. So I made these all have the same sort of like root question. So we could use the same shape for all of them. Um, so consider the first quadrant re region bounded by. This would be a sideways parabola. Watch me point to this. It would go like this. Do you see what I'm saying? Except you're only going to do the part in the first quadrant. And then the line x equals 4. So that's going to end up looking like this. If you stop it at 4. You see what I did there? I just did the part in the first quadrant. 
What I want you to do is go ahead and draw that for all four, because we're going to use it for all four of them. Um, and then we'll do our halfway break. Just get it drawn for all of them, though, okay? Yeah, so for the third one, the reason, well, you'll see why I left so much room there. But, well, here, let's talk about that. The line you're going to revolve around is x equals 6. Do you see that there? So, like, then to do your ghost shape on the other side, I just wanted to leave you enough space so that you could see it. So that's why the third one is scaled a little differently. But, yeah, once you get them all drawn, um, just we'll do our brain break. All right, so for letter A, we're gonna spin around the X axis. So it'll be a DX problem. Draw your ghost shape down below the X axis. And I want you to kind of think about that. What do you notice? It doesn't have a hole in it. It's your disc method. I threw that in there on purpose so that you could you know, pay attention to it and visualize it and see. And then I was hoping someone would do that because I think we did that exact problem previously. If you can find it, I won't make you do it again. It is. It's eight pi. Good job. See if you can find it. But yeah, we did that one. So I wanted you to notice that that's discs, not washers. There's not a hole in between. Okay. So this one, I wasn't, I didn't make you do it again because we already did it. If you look back, it's there in your notes, right? So letter B, we're going to spin this shape around the y-axis. So draw your ghost shape on the other side of the y-axis. It's a mirror image to the y-axis. And this will have a hole in it now. Your outside radius goes all the way to the edges. I'm just trying to make it look three-dimensional for you. That goes all the way to the edge. Your inside radius is this hole in the middle. It just goes to this edge right here. So let's try and envision what that would look like. It would be flat around the outside. Do you see that? Like, because this is just linear there. So the outside would be flat. And then the inside would like... Yeah, or like, you know what I think of? Do you know those things that you can put a quarter in um, and it like spins around to go down oh, yeah. to the center? Like ish, like sort of ish like that. Just to give you a visual. But there is a hole in the middle. All right, so it's going to be pi r squared minus r squared dy. Do you guys know the thing I'm talking about? You put the money yeah. in and it spins around? Yeah, I couldn't walk past one as a child. It was like, let's put a, a coin in physics and stuff. I just asked my yeah. <laughs> well, I think they were for charity, too. Like, I think the money went somewhere. All right. It is around the y-axis, so it's dy. So what are your boundaries? They need to be y values. Yep, zero to two. Good. And so it's going to be right graph minus left graph. Watch for this one. Right graph on the outside. We're doing the bigger one. Outside right graph minus left graph. Now the left graph just is the axis because we're spinning around the y-axis. So what is our outside radius? It's four minus zero, which just is four. You write four minus zero if you want, but if it's the axis that you're spinning around, like if it says the y-axis, um, it's zero. All right, now your inside one is again right minus left but it's from here to the axis it's this part to the axis so what is that good it's y squared minus zero which is just y squared so let's clean that up a little bit what is that going to give us yeah yeah so when you do the inside for the inside one so the inside one is from this graph, you see the curve to the axis. So it's right graph minus left graph, but the left graph is the axis, so that's zero. So it's your, your equation, your y squared, okay. this part right here, minus nothing. So I just wrote y squared. 
if you rotate around an axis, so like X axis or Y axis, that's always going to be zero. Like look at C though. I know I didn't get to that one yet, but to see how we're going to spin around X equals six, it won't be zero anymore because you've like shifted it over. All right, so what is this going to give us? The 16 minus Y to the fourth DY. And I think this is the same as the one on the other side of the paper, but it'll only take a second. Just let's finish it off. Antiderivative would be 16. Well, I know that happens all the time, but if you ever look down and you see a mixture of X's and Y's, just change one of them. Minus one fifth Y to the fifth, such that zero to two. And then, yeah, it's the same as what we got on the other side of the paper. Or is it exactly? Oh, it's close, but yeah, 32 minus 32 fifths. What was the other one? Eight minus or 16? Anyway, close, a little different. All right, so now we're gonna spin around the line x equals six. So I wanna go ahead and dot that in. And real quick, watch me point to this because we wanna figure out if it's dx or dy. Do you see how it's like you just took the y-axis and shifted it over? So it's gonna be dy. It'll be a dy problem, right? So take your uh, shape and do the mirror image to the other side. This is your like ghost shape over here. And let's try and think what this one looks like. Your outside radius goes all the way to the edge. Inside, this is like the hole that got punched through it. I'm not sure what that would be, like a volcano sort of. Do you see what I'm saying? Like around, it would be round like this, but then there's like a hole in the middle. Volcano is what I'm going with. It's a what? Anyone see something different? <laughs> yeah, we have very thick Frisbee because it's solid. Like that part is solid. <laughs> well, it's almost lunchtime, so I get that. All right, so go ahead and set it up. Do your framework. I mean, it's going to be dy. So pi r squared minus r squared dy. What are your boundaries? Zero to two. They're y values since it's dy. And then again, watch me point to it. I'm, in, I'm trying to color code. We're going to do right graph minus left graph. So your outside radius is this. So what is your right graph? Six minus your left graph is this curve, which was y squared. So it's six minus y squared. And then the inside one, look at, that's this. So right graph minus left graph, that would be six minus four. Now you can write six minus four if you want, but that is two. And the other thing you can do is, did any of you just look at it and go, oh, that's two? Like, that's the other thing you can do. Like, oh, from there to there is two for the hole in the middle. There's a hole in the middle. And it's hard to visualize because it's not actually three-dimensional. You're trying to visualize a three-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional piece of paper. But you know what makes it better? Practice. That's, you know, you, by doing problems. All right, we're going to work this one out. Algebra. Six minus y squared squared. If you can do that in your head, that's really cool. But this is what that means if you need a visual. I just wrote it like off to the side here. So what's that going to give us? I, can I do it in order? Yeah. So 36 <laughs> minus what? How many y squared? 12 y squared, good. Plus y to the fourth. And now I'm just going to take the other end of my pencil and erase because this would be minus four. So instead of writing minus four, I'm just going to change this to a 32. Because otherwise, if you're at minus four, then you have to do a whole nother step where you combine like terms. So that's why I just erased it. All right, antiderivative. Pi is going to sit out front. This will be 32y. Good job. Minus 4y cubed. Good job. Plus 1 fifth y to the fifth. Such that 0 to 2. And then basically, you just need to plug in 2. 
Uh, so again, pi just sits out front. If you plug in two, uh, what is that? 64 minus 32 plus 32 fifths. I'm going to leave it there. All right, we're doing awesome on time. All right. It'll be 32 plus 32 fifths and then pi out front. All right, so this one, we're going to spin around the line y equals 2. So go ahead and dot in y equals 2. This is your axis of revolution. And what you want to say to yourself is, okay, it's like I took the x-axis and shifted it a little bit. Do you see that? So it's going to be a dx problem. That's how you can tell dx or dy. So draw your ghost shape on the other side. And so can we envision that here? I'm going to turn it this way. Like, it would be like a drinking glass. Like, do you get that the outside is, like, circular? But, like, the inside would be like this. So it's like a really weird drinking glass, but you could still put water inside. Are you, are you seeing it? Yes. It's like a cylinder, but the inside is weird. <laughs> it's like a really fancy, schmancy glass. All right, so it's going to be a dx problem. So go ahead and set it up with your blanks and put dx. So what are the boundaries going to be if it's dx? At zero to four, you want x values now. All right, so again, I will try to color code this. This time it's upper minus lower. So this is your outside radius. What is the upper graph? Two minus, yeah, the lower graph is zero, right? So two minus zero is just two. And the other thing you can do is look at it and go, oh, I see that that outside radius is two. Okay. The inside one, you're doing upper minus lower, only the lower one is this curve now. So it will be two minus now, hold on, because I think we have to actually go back and rearrange this. It's going to be 2 minus, you know, the equation, but it would be square root of x. You can feel free to just go ahead and put that one in your calculator. Again, that's an important skill to have, so don't sleep on the calculator ones. Like, you do need to know how to do that. Is that what you got to? Okay. 